I mean, self-paced doesn't mean independent learning necessarily. Sometimes self-paced learning often is uh, an opportunity for students to work in collaborative groups with people that maybe they have not worked with before. It's a perfect time for me to have one-to-one -one time or small group time with every single student in my classroom. In a, a larger, more traditional, I mean, I could line up desks and I could lecture for 80 minutes and they'll write it down, but when they leave, what have they accomplished? So we all sat there together. I have no, under, I have no understanding of what they got what their knowledge base is, what they're taking from it, what they'll remember the next day. With the proficiency itself broken down into essential questions, they rewrite it in their own words so they have an understanding of what to do. And then the rest of it is, here are my learning targets, and then it is a read, watch, or do option. Um, every unit, bar a couple, has probably five or six performance tasks. And those are really the assignments. And those are the things that they will work through at their own pace. How they get there, if they want to plug in and watch something first, great. But one of those performance tasks is going to require them to read somewhere, either read out of a book or read, I have, you know, we use CK12 um, as a kind of a curated online. So I've, I've been able to go and find differentiated readings for all my students um, in the read section. So they have to read and they'll go. So it's a closed exercise, it's some notes, it's some, you know, uh, something analogous. So they'll read and they'll say, okay, well, how does this apply? So that gives, gives me license to create and, and be really creative with how I want them to, you know, approach reading and approach that task. Not, it's not just fill in the blank and hand it in. It's like, okay, here's a drawing. How is what you, you know, what are you reading? How does it apply to this? So I can sort of build that in. It really isn't as plug and play as we would like because the rest of the performance tasks are all due. It's get up, go and do, and you can do it without technology. Uh, my eights this year sat down and created new smartphone amplifiers. I gave them a budget. I gave them materials. They worked through the engineering process. And then kids that wanted to later could use Google SketchUp, could sketch it all out, move it into um, Kira, which is our 3D printing program, and end up with their own you know, legitimate smartphone amplifier. But we would test it with decibels. So I kind of pull them out of technology and allow them to go back into that. for me it really looks like whack-a-mole I and mean, you come in and it kind of looks like controlled chaos because i might have three labs going in two different provisions and i have students working in different you know different spots in different places even the classroom is set up based on what their needs are so there's a social center in which they can work collaboratively they can sit and look at data there are whiteboards they sit and sketch things out and talk about okay here's what we got here's our data what does it mean how do we express this uh, there's quiet work time workspace in the front of the classroom where they, you know, if you choose to sit there, you're kind of telling me, okay, I really need a one-to-one -one sit down or that, you know, we're both the two of us or the three of us are in the same space. So we'll sit down and work together. And then we have lab area where they are kind of back and creating and building and working on you know, numerous things throughout the year. So it's, it, you know, for me and I just bounce around between all three spaces and I can then get a really true understanding. I mean, for me, it's like reflection because I can walk and say, okay, tell me what you understand. And they'll say, well, this is what I think is going on. So I'm catching misconceptions at the source instead of waiting until I get to, you know, the final test and saying, oh, gosh, you know, half the kids really didn't do well. Well, where did I miss it? Where did I, you know, what was I not getting? And I could try little formatives along the way, but even then it never really hit what I was hoping for. So this is an opportunity for me to sort of kind of catch that misconception. So I design it with misconceptions in mind. And then if I, I can see where that might be, that allows my reflection to go back and make those playlists better. And it allows me to stop that student right there and kind of take a time out and say, okay, what do you need to, what do we need to do from here? Let's catch this before we move forward. I mean, that's the understanding. And once I do that, then they edit. Uh, they edit their projects, they edit their labs, their papers, and those who do the editing do the learning. 